Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to discuss internal capsule. Okay, it's all about internal capsule. Internal capsule is an important structure. It is very commonly affected in stroke. And so it's important to uh, learn about its uh, structure, its anatomy, its blood supply. Okay, so first of all, we are going to discuss basic is there is cerebral hemisphere. Okay, cerebral hemisphere is divided into two parts, cerebral cortex and subcortical structure. That is structures below, below this cortex. It involves one of them is IC, internal capsule, basal ganglia, thalamus, hypothalamus and all other structures. Okay, so uh, in, an internal capsule becomes the connecting uh, element between cortex and the subcortical structure and brain stem and spinal cord. Okay, so basically internal capsule is connecting this cortex and subcortical structures, basal ganglia, uh, thalamus, brain stem and spinal cord. Okay. Uh, between the uh, between the cerebral cortex and internal capsule, the, there are the this fibers, okay, ascending and descending fibers from the cerebral cortex or to the cerebral cortex from corona radiata. Okay, so internal capsule is basically it is a in, it is present inferomedially in the cerebral hemisphere. Okay, it is a white matter structure that means there are myelinated CNS tracts. Okay, and it is a subcortical structure. So basically, internal capsule is an inf inferomedial white matter subcortical structure in cerebral hemisphere. Okay, so there are CNS tracks that are going and coming through this internal capsule, and is, uh, there, it, it is a connection between cortex and subcortical structures. Okay, uh, and between the internal capsule and cerebral cortex, corona radiata becomes a connecting element. Okay, so just a continuation of the same fibers. Okay. So I hope I am clear. Internal capsule basically when the ascending and descending fibers go through it, internal capsule divides the basal ganglia, basal ganglia into two parts, medially corded nucleus, okay, and laterally globus pallidus plus putamen, which is together known as lentiform nucleus, okay. So medially corded nucleus and laterally uh, lentiform nucleus, okay. And so this internal capsule is a V-shaped structure. Okay, it's a V-shaped structure where apex is medially. Okay, this is your V-shaped structure where apex is medially. Okay, this is your internal capsule. So it has anterior limb, it has genu, and it has posterior limb. Medially, it has corded nucleus. Okay, medially it has corded nucleus. Laterally, it has lentiform nucleus, and medially, posterior medially, it has thalamus. Okay, so this is the anatomy of the internal capsule. I hope this is clear. Now we, are, we have to understand the structure. So the fibers are important. Okay, why these fibers are important? Because any area of the internal capsule is affected. You have to know which area, which clinically, when you have to know which area of internal capsule is affected, for that these fibers are necessary. Okay. Now anterior limb, always remember anterior limb will connect these fibers, will connect, the, will connect the cortical and subcortical structures in the frontal lobe. Okay, so there are two, uh, two fibers, frontopontine, which is descending fiber and thalamocortical. Thalamocortical is a sensory fiber, myelinated sensory fibers or myelinated CNS tract that goes from thalamus. These fibers came from spinal cord to the thalamus. Now, these are going from thalamus to the cerebral cortex, okay, to the sen sensory cortex. So, these are ascending and these are descending. Okay. Simple. Now, in genu, okay, remember the, the, the arrangement, the arrangement of the fibers is very specific in internal capsule. I'll show you another picture. So, as you can see, the head is here in the genu. Okay. Basically, the fibers of head and neck is in the genu. Okay. And uh, upper limb, trunk and lower limb are in the posterior limb. Uh, 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 Upper limb, trunk and posterior limb, uh, lower limb fibers are present in the posterior limb of internal capsule. So, anteriorly all the frontal fibers are there, frontal lobe fibers, okay, that is frontopontine which is descending and ascending is thalamocortical going into the frontal lobe, okay. But the, the supply of head and neck is in the genu, okay, and uh, apart from that, that is upper limb, trunk and lower limb is in the posterior limb. This is very important. So, if clinically patient presents with low, uh, dense hemiplegia of lower limb, limb of uh, especially lower limb or upper limb, then semiplegia of upper limb, trunk and lower limb, then you have to suspect posterior limb, uh, in fact of internal capsule. 
ओके नाउ अदर थिंग्स तो जेनू विल हैव हेड एंड नेक हेड मीन्स यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड हेड मीन्स कॉर्टिको बल्बर फाइबर्स ओके और कॉर्टिको बल्बर इज वॉट क्रेनियल नाउ ओके क्रेनियल नाउ हैव दे न्यूक्लियर इन द ब्रेन स्टेम मेनली ओके एंड कॉर्टेक्स इज सप्लाइंग दो क्रेनियल नाउ न्यूक्लियर सो फ्रॉम कॉर्टेक्स टू दैट क्रेनियल नाउ न्यूक्लियर इज नोन एज कॉर्टिको बल्बर ओके कॉर्टेक्स टू क्रेनियल नाउ न्यूक्लियर This will mainly supply the head and neck area, especially head area. Okay, so like trigeminal nerve and all. Okay, and corticospinal fibers to the head and neck area. Okay, posterior limb has corticospinal fibers, which are again descending. Corticospinal fibers to trunk, upper and lower limbs. Corticorubral fibers that is to the red nucleus present in midbrain and Uh, Temporo pontine. So apart from prefrontal pontine, okay, all these fibers are also going from cortex to pons, that is brainstem. So apart from frontal lobe, temporal lobe, parietal lobe, and occipital lobe are also giving fibers to pontine, and th this go through posterior limb and ascending fibers from thalamus to all other cortexes. This is temporal, parietal, and occipital lobes is present in posterior limb. It's very simple. Okay, just divide into ascending and descending uh, fibers, and you will understand this. Okay, this lateral lentiform and this is a good picture for this. Okay, so lateral lateral lentiform. The name name itself suggests retro means behind. Okay, and sub means below. So behind is what? Behind is your occipital lobe. So remember, occipital lobe is mainly for visual cortex. It's a visual cortex. So visual radiation will pass through the retro lentiform. Okay, retro lenticular portion of internal capsule. Okay, to stria cortex of occipital lobe. So this is how you can remember below. Okay, so basically where this uh, visual radiation is going from lateral geniculate body. Okay, from lateral this is lateral geniculate body. And medial geniculate body are part of thalamus. Okay, so as you can see, this is the thalamus, and they have these two geniculate bodies. From medial geniculate body, what passes is auditory radiation. Okay, and from lateral, it what passes is visual radiation. Okay, so visual radiation are going from lateral geniculate body behind the internal capsule and forming the retro lentiform portion of inter internal capsule, and from medial geniculate body. auditory radiation are going below the uh, internal capsule and are forming the sub lentiform part and they are going the auditory radiation are going towards temporal lobe okay so i hope this is very clear this is a very good picture to remember very basic also okay now another thing that is important is blood supply of this internal capsule so remember as you can see in this picture this is your middle cerebral artery this is your middle cerebral artery as it goes it is after uh, ica continues at an smca it goes laterally okay towards the cortex there it divides into superficial branches and deep branches okay this deep branches mc is divided into two parts superficial and deep this deep branches are smaller branches okay and they are also known as lenticulo striate branches okay superficial again divides into superior and inferior division and this part this superficial will provide the mainly provide blood supply to cortices okay but this lenticular deep branches are very important because this deep branches this lenticular striate branches of mca is a main supply of internal capsule okay throughout as you can see in this lenticular striate branches are supplying anterior limb also genu also and posterior limb also so it's a very important branch okay other than apart from this lenticular striate branch of uh, mca there are two other important branches so always remember whenever you are uh, uh, studying about internal capsule you have to divide anterior and posterior limb into super superior and inferior part okay inferior half And superior half. So anterior limb. Now another see. See this is your ICA. Okay, this is your ICA from which MCA is continuing, divided into superficial and deep branches. These are your deep branches. Okay. Now as you can see, this is your ICA. Okay, these are your two ICA which are connected by ACM. Okay, uh, that is anterior communicating artery. This ICA is giving one branch. ACA. This uh, sorry. This is these are two ACA branches which are come uh, connected by 
anterior communicating artery. This ACA is giving one branch which is known as recurrent artery of Huebner. Okay. This artery supplies the inferior half of anterior limb. Okay. Inferior half of anterior limb. So, you can see this diagram is really good. Okay. And as you can see, this is the ICA. ICA will give one more branch which is known as anterior choroidal artery to the posterior. This is your internal capsule. Okay. It will give a this is your internal capsule. It will give off, give off one more branch which is known as anterior choroidal artery to the posterior limb. That is inferior half of posterior limb. Okay. So, if you understand this figure, this anatomy, you will understand the blood supply of the internal capsule. Okay. This recurrent artery is very important because it is more very commonly damaged in neurosurgery when they do surgery of brain for ACOM aneurysm. Okay. So, it is commonly injured. That's why it's a very common artery to know. Okay. So, now remember this blood supply, this all branches of internal capsule are small branches. Okay. So, they can be affected by thrombosis, embolism, but mainly they are uh, uh, affected by lipohyalinosis. Okay. As the name suggests, it, it is a lipohyalinosis of small vessels of internal capsule. Okay. Lipohyalinosis. That means there is proteinaceous plus lipid substance present in the blood vessel wall and causing the obstruction of this vessel or occlusion of this vessel leading to lacunar infarct. Okay. So, basically, when a small vessel is stenosed and when that the area of the brain which is supplied by this small vessels is affected or is infected, it is called lacunar infarct. Okay. It's because it forms a, sm a small lacunalized spaces. Okay. So, this can cause lacunar infarct. So, why lacunar infarct in internal capsule is very important. So, as you can see from cortex or to the cortex, the, the fibers are going and Densing, condensing in the internal capsule. Okay, condensing in the internal capsule. So, the number of fibers and the surface area uh, is different in the co cerebral cortex and in the internal capsule. So, if this is a small area of cerebral cortex, it will have, for example, five fibers of CNS tracks. But if a small area of internal capsule is affected because this fibers from different area, they are condensing in the internal capsule. If even if small lacunar infarct is there here, it will cause a large defect or large clinic like more clinical clinically affected. That's why it, if if for example this posterior limb is infarcted, okay, even if this this is a small area for internal capsule, okay, it is a small lacuna, but because Upper limb fibers, trunk fibers and lower limb fibers are actually condensed or are concentrated in this small area. Those all will be affected in the internal capsule infarct and that's why they present with dense hemiplegia of one side or dense contralateral hemiplegia. So, what happens is if a patient presents to us with a dense hemiplegia of one side, we will suspect subcortical infarct more than cortical infarct because <laughs> the area of presentation, you can see it's very large in cerebral cortex. So, if this small area is affected, very small number of fibers are affected. So, the uh, basically, it will not cause a dense hemiplegia. Okay, it will be always like upper limb is more affected or one part is more affected than uh, another part. Okay, like upper limb is more affected than lower limb. Okay, or trunk is more affected than upper limb so because the area is large. Now, as you can see, this will condense in the internal capsule. So, if internal capsule infarct is there, even if there is a small infarct, it will cause a large defect. Okay, and so they will present with dense hemiplegia. So, this is the importance of uh, internal capsule and so you have to know its anatomy, its uh, structures what are present in it, its functions basically the structures you are th uh, that are present here, this fibers, why they are important okay and its blood supply. So, I hope I have made it clear. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and if you really like my video, please like click the like button, share and subscribe. Thank you so much.